Now, in terms of just, uh, you mentioned you don't have to be as in physical a shape as, say, fighter pilots or people that are being selected to be for astronauts. How does that figure into the candidate? Say if you had somebody that's uh, maybe you know, 30, 40, even 50 pounds overweight, but was willing to uh, I, you know, work out, exercise, eat properly, to, to lose weight during this period, do, do you uh, say, yes, let's bring them into the program if all the other qualifications are met, or do they need to be sort of already coming into the program and pretty much physically fit? No, we had um, a body mass index, uh, we, had, we had a cutoff line, but it, it was a soft one to sit for your feeling. Uh, we will see how they do it during the program, how, how they become. So we have 10 years, and 10 years they can be huge, they can be same. So we will see that he has to perform as well as the others. He has to go through uh, a metal tunnel, for example, because he has to go from one part to the other part. And if he can't fit through, he can't go through, then he's not fit to doing it, basically. So we really look practically, can he do it or not? Now, it's certainly right that people are thinking about Mars and thinking you're sending people over there on a one-way expedition there for this. And men and women making up the team, so you start thinking about the possibility of procreation for that. Set. How much of that is a importance right now? Or is that something that's not that important right now? That's that something that's you're working on uh, in terms of procreation, the first baby of Mars. Uh, the important thing for us is 50% have to be female, and I said this from the start. So what we saw from our group selection is mixed gender groups are far better performing than just single gender, it doesn't matter in which gender they are. Yeah. So we really have mixed gender 50%. And then the question about procreation of Mars, and I talked to the applicants and they were very clear on two. At first we will try out animals. Animals have to procreate and from there we will learn are there complications, what kind of complications they are, how we can contact the complications, and then uh, we will have uh, procreation sooner or later, definitely a Mars without a question. It, it, will not be now. And I'm really thinking when, in comparison, uh, the first human on Mars is exciting, the first baby on Mars will be just watched by many more yeah. people. And it's an exciting event and I think uh, everything was, was, uh, works well, but just in case, and we always have this backup system, all our applicants will learn about gynecology and all the difficulties that can be occur and so on that they are prepared just in case. So we have a lot of training for just in case. And just what kind of, since you're bringing, starting off with smaller animals, kind of increasing the size, so what kind of, how, what kind of time frame would you be looking at before you even consider probably human procreation? I, uh, we have to see how, how fast that really works. Um, that's, that's really too far. We are more concentrating to have the oxygen and water and then they can right. live there. And then we will look at that. It's tough to say it can be very quick, it can be slow, it depends. Really. Now, you said you 50% uh, uh, split uh, yeah. in gender works the best. Why is that? Why does that combination work best as opposed to just doing all men, all women instead? Oh, I think because they bring some additions into the group. You know, so I, I compared with, with black and white and color TV. So when you have if, if women or you have men with women, okay, it becomes a color TV. So everybody is more calm. They can't say, oh, I, I, I work like a guy or I work like a woman because they said, oh, there's a woman, I have to be more careful. And she, oh, that the guys. So it is interesting how they work in interaction together and they bring different perspective, different ideas in it, and that we have it also international, and this is the next step, it gives a more complication, but everybody brings something from his different culture, from his different background, and that makes it even from 2D to 3D, if mm -hmm. I still keep it in the same frame, whereas far more exciting when everybody brings it, and it's tough to work with each other, to understand each other, but then the product is just a lot better. Now, as you're mixing and matching all these people together, and we talked about, you know, you've got to be able to list down everything that might possibly bother you, all your pet peeves, things that you might not care about. I still think that might be tough for people to do right out of the outset, just because I guess society just, we've kind of been, we're all polite. We're trying to be polite to each other. We, you know, there's societal norms that we have. How do you break through that and just to really get to like, this is, you got to just be, no filter on you. You got to be absolutely no filter and just say everything that bothers you or excites you about a person so that we can make best possible match. First, I'm, I tell them from the beginning they really have to observe themselves, but we also put them in teams and in groups together. So we really look uh, how they react and we will talk. So Ray Cars and, and, and Jim Cars are very specialists about that, really to probe the people. And, and I saw them, I worked with her and I was with the sister of the, Dr. Cars, and she really probed the people and to say got the worst out of them in, in a positive way. And mm -hmm. you really saw how they came out and they said, oh, 
that was fascinating. They said, we liked each other, but after she talked to us, we started hating each other. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's how you do it during the training mm -hmm. and, and really to get it out. And it, it's, they say always, uh, conflict is normal. And conflict is, is good, it always happens, we can't avoid it. But what do we do with the conflict? That's the key point. Are we angry about each other or try we to cheer each other up? And that's what we're looking at. So if there are two types together, can they actually cheer each other? If somebody's angry about something little and the other one, hey, come on, what are you doing? It's not so big and so on. Or is it, or start fighting with him. So that's very interesting. There you go. Well, and speaking of Dr. Cast, why don't we bring him online and we'll have the three of us have a little talk about all Good. the work that you've been doing here. All right, folks, we'll be right back here. We'll bring Dr. James Cass in and get him in on the conversation.